to sell calls and sell puts without needing 100 shares of the stock or tons of money to put up as collateral. And so before you ever enter this trade or any other options trade, please make sure you know how to close it. Sometimes you will want to close before the options expire. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because selling puts and selling calls is a really great and consistent way to generate income. And one of the best things about selling calls and selling puts is that we can take advantage of theta decay right which is you know how much an option loses in value just from time passing by however the problem with selling puts and selling calls is that it can be pretty expensive right because for example let's say i wanted to sell calls and sell puts on plug power if i go into the options for plug power let's say i wanted to sell a call right now let's say i wanted to sell this call right here and i go ahead and try to do this what's it going to tell me it's going to say hey you can't do this because you don't have enough shares. Why? Because we need 100 shares to sell a covered call. And I don't have 100 shares. And sometimes that can be pretty expensive. For example, on stocks like Tesla, Google, Amazon, right? That's a lot of money to buy 100 shares. Similarly, right, if I wanted to sell a put on plug, I can sell a put because I have enough uh, buying power to do so. But what if I wanted to sell like four puts, right? If I went ahead and you know clicked on this and said, hey, I wanna sell four puts or so, what's it gonna tell me? It's gonna say, hey, you don't have enough collateral. And that's the problem with selling puts and selling calls for some people is that it can be pretty expensive and it might require a ton of money. And so our goal here with today's video is we'd like to be able to sell calls and sell puts and we're actually going to do both here to maximize our premium and benefit from time decay, but for a very, very cheap price, especially when you compare it to how much money you'd need to do this uh, with, you know, having 100 shares, putting up collateral to actually sell puts. Uh, and of course, all of this with limited risk. So our max loss will be defined here. So ultimately, our ideal situation here is Let's say you can't afford to sell puts and sell calls. Maybe you don't want to risk that much money because you are risking all the money you put in, right, when selling calls. Because if you buy 100 shares of the stock, the stock can go to $0. So you are risking a lot of money there, right? And so uh, maybe you, you just don't want to risk that much money, uh, but you still want to collect premium, right? This is a great strategy uh, to use as an alternative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use plug power here for today's video. And of course, like I always mention, before you actually get into the options, two important things you need to check. Number one, commission fees. Why? Because we're going to be opening and closing multiple contracts. Depending on what broker you're on, that can eat away at a lot of your profit. Luckily for us on Robinhood, there aren't any commission fees, so we never have to worry about that. The second thing, we are going to be selling options. Anytime you sell an option, there is risk of assignment. We want to avoid early assignment. Early assignment is generally related to the X dividend dates. So what we want to do, is we want to check, does the stock have a dividend? If it does, we want to check when the X dividend date is. We want to avoid selling options expiring on the week of the X dividend date. If you do sell options on that week, you want to close out two days before. So if I check here, uh, plug power doesn't have a dividend but let's say we were using a stock that has a dividend you could go over to nasdaq.com you would type in the ticker symbol so let's say i was using at&t instead i would go ahead and click t uh, press t here uh, and then go over to at&t here then on the left you can go to dividend history this will let you know when the x dividend date is right and again you want to avoid selling options on that week if you do, you wanna close out two days before to avoid being early assigned. So anyways, once you've checked those two things, then you can finally go into the options for the stock. So let's go into the options here now for plug power. And so the very first thing that I wanna do here is I wanna choose a proper expiration date. Now with this particular strategy, there's actually gonna be two different expiration dates. And so the first one that we're gonna choose here is gonna be the closest expiration date to us. Um, and so usually you want to go out, you know, a few weeks 
there really isn't a whole lot of rules around you know what the expiration date should be here but ultimately you're going to want to choose a stock that you believe is going to remain flat and you know it's, it's going to remain flat over maybe you think it's going to be flat over the next three weeks four weeks or so right so that's kind of the the ideal situation here is you want to choose a stock that you think is going to be flat over the next you know three four five weeks so what i'm going to do so I'm going to choose January 28th here for my first expiration date. Okay, so here we have our first expiration date. What you want to determine again is what price you believe this stock will be at on the expiration. Again, you should usually use this strategy when you're neutral on a stock, when you think it's just going to trade sideways. So if I think plug is going to keep trading sideways for the next few weeks, let's say I, I believe plug will be at around $25 on the expiration of January 28th. So if I believe it's going to be at around $25 on the expiration, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sell a call option at that strike. So I'm going to sell this call here and then I'm also going to go ahead and sell a put at the exact same strike. So I would go ahead and sell a put at the exact same strike, right? So here again, we're selling a put and we're selling a call. We're doubling our premium here. This alone actually is a covered straddle, right? Uh, but this alone would cost way too much money, right? If I went ahead and continued here, you know, I need 100 shares of plug, then I'd have to put up enough collateral as well to buy 100 shares for $25 a share. So again, that ends up being quite a bit. So what we can do instead is let me do this here quickly. So we're selling two, uh, we're selling a call, we're selling a put at $25 strike. So now what we can do instead of doing this, using this covered straddle here and having to put up so much money, so much collateral, buying 100 shares, what we can do here is we can go out to a further out expiration date. Uh, usually, again, maybe a month or so, a couple of weeks. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to February 18th now. Uh, so I'm going to go out fe February 18th. And what I can do now is I can go ahead and buy a call option now at the exact same strike of the call and put that I'm selling. So that was the $25 strike. So I'll buy a call now at that same strike, the $25 strike. And I'll also buy a put now at the $25 strike. Okay. So this is what I'm doing here. As you can see, you're going to enter this for a debit. This one would be $138. It's actually going to end up also being my max risk. That's the most I'm going to be able to lose here. Uh, and so ultimately, uh, now that I've done this, I can go ahead and sell the call and sell the put, right? Because if I get assigned on those, here I am buying a put and I am buying a call, which we can exercise to cover uh, in case we're assigned on the short call and the short put here. And so ultimately, uh, this is going to be called a calendar straddle right we're we're selling a straddle and then we're going to a further out expiration and we're buying a straddle and so this is a calendar straddle uh but as you'll see really great way to sell puts and sell calls here without having to have as much money as you would need if you were just selling a uh, covered straddle alone so uh, what i want to do here of course is if we take a look again this is going to cost 138 uh you know you, the, robin hood does have this chart here but again i always encourage you to go to option strat to visually take a look at what this is going to look like depending on the date depending on the price depending on implied volatility all those things so i'm going to go over to option strat here and let's take a look at what this calendar straddle looks like now so i'm going to go to build here and we can actually just uh, go to calendar call spread or calendar put spread. We'll start with the calendar call spread here. So we'll go here. And so remember, we uh, we used uh, PLUG, which is plug. So we'll go to plug here. Uh, so let's take a look at what we did, right? So we chose our first expiration was January 28th. And we sold the call at the $25 strike. Again, because we believe that this the stock plug will be at around that price on January 28th. Then we went ahead, we bought a call, same strike, $25 strike. Uh, but for this one, we chose the expiration date of February 18th, right? So we did this here. Then we went ahead and we, well, when we sold the call, we also sold a put along with it, uh, same strike. 
and same expiration. And then over here, when we bought the call, we bought a put with it as well. So this should also have same expiration as the call that we bought. So that's gonna be February 18th. And so uh, this should be February 18th here. Uh, so February 18th. Okay, so there we go. Uh, so this is what, you know, this is exactly close to what we're seeing over here for our loss and profit if we take a look down here. Uh, so it's always nice to kind of double check that there. Uh, but let's take a look here at what this is telling us. So again, we're entering this for a debit. So we're paying to enter it 138. That's also going to be our max loss. So very cheap, very cheap compared to if I were to sell a call and sell a put and not have uh, the long straddle uh, at a further out expiration, right? That would that would require a lot more money. Max profit now, $208.57. Look at my break evens between 22.50 and 28.11. So it's a very huge range here where you can be profitable, right? Basically 10% up, 10% down, you can still be profitable on the stock. So that's pretty nice here. Uh, and if we take a look here, you know, as again, as long as the stock continues to trade sideways, we're gonna make money. We're basically benefiting from theta decay here. And if we take a look here, these are some pretty big returns. If we take a look, for example, you know, 150, 120, 90% returns in just, you know, three weeks or so. Really great returns, very high probability of success here, of course, as well. Uh, now, uh, again, this is uh, called the calendar straddle and ultimately right on the expiration here we're going to have three different options right because we have two expirations here two different expirations this is showing up till the, the expiration of the options we sold so when the 28th comes you're going to have three potential options first and probably the most popular one is you're going to close out the entire position once the expiration date comes of the short options hopefully at a profit Second option you have is you close these two short options, which is going to be uh, the short uh, calendar or short straddle that you have. And you're going to go ahead and sell another short straddle, right? Because if you close this on the 28th, you could potentially sell another short straddle for the 4th or for the 11th, right? Basically, anytime before your long options expire. The third option you have is you close the short straddle and you just keep the long straddle, right? Especially if you think the stock's gonna make a very huge move in either direction. But again, the most popular one is to close out of the entire position once the expiration date comes uh, for the short straddle, right? The straddle that you sold here. And so again, last thing of course here is always take a look at what changes in implied volatility do. If Ivy starts to go down, we don't want that to happen, as you can see. If implied volatility starts to go up, though, that's what we would want to happen, right? So ultimately, this one, as you can see, is affected quite a bit by IV because you are buying two options. You're buying a put, you're buying a call, uh, and those are basically gonna be at the money here. So obviously, a change in IV is really gonna affect this uh, position here. So anyways, if you have any questions about anything I just talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Check out the Discord link to it in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys next time.